Hello, I'm Grant from Makers Vlog, and um, today it's bloody cold in here, hence the gloves. But more importantly, I'm going to be showing you how to make a jamming device. Now, quick one on legalities on this. If you want to skip ahead, go ahead, wait till just skip until you see the cutting mat, and that'll be me actually talking through it. But depending on where you are, these devices range from okay to use in some circumstances to completely illegal. Um, here in the UK, they are more or less completely illegal. However, um, you can have permission to use them, which I have um, for testing and research purposes. So I'm allowed to make and use this under certain criteria. Depending on where you are in the country, you need to be very careful if you build this and use it because you could be um, operating outside of the law. But that's enough of the boring stuff. Let's, uh, let's get in and I'll show you what you need. Okay, so. Thankfully, with the rise of microcontrollers and all those fun bits and pieces, this is really bloody cheap to make. Um, this is, uh, here's one I made earlier. This is using an Arduino Uno and a 433 MHz uh, transmitter. Um, and that's the receiver. This is the wee kit that you can buy that's just, I think it comes with about 10 of them or so. And it's about... 10 beer tokens, it's dirt dirt cheap to get um, all of the receivers and transmitters and I mean Arduino Uno is dirt cheap but if you want to make it even cheaper um, this is an Arduino Mini or Micro um, and I got a pack of I think about 5 of these for again about 10 beer tokens and this works just as well um, here's a sort of more portable version of this that I made um, on a proto board, so it, either will work fine, whichever one you want to use. I'm using the Uno just because it's um, it's got the nice uh, power jack, which you can use with a 9 volt battery to power everything. Um, you can do that with these ones, uh, but you need to solder on a, uh, a power jack connector somewhere, and I, I don't have any lying around, so I'm sticking to the Uno for now. Uh, this is the wee uh, transmitter itself. It's very simple circuit. Um, you have your let me get something to point with. Let's let's use that. So you have on here. This is the uh, end pin. Is the data connection. So that's where the uh, you actually send the signal that you want to transmit. The middle pin is for the um, positive, and the ground is the negative. Self-explanatory. These devices can take up to twelve volts. Um, they can take slightly higher than that. I have had this run for 24 volts. It did not last very long, so stick to 12 volts. Um, and it also has no <laughs> reverse protection if you short the antenna. So there's a wee slot here. Um, if you can see that, and that is where this antenna slots into. Um, you usually get these antennas with it. So you do, and they just stick up like so. Um, I have shorted the ground connection, I've touched the ground connection off that and live was plugged in and it let the smoke out, it'll, it'll burn it out in seconds so uh, to try to avoid that if you're doing them. Um, they are a bit fragile but they are also quite cheap so it's, it's, uh, it's not, uh, not the end of the world if one does get fried, I have fried many of these. So the actual wire setup is um, very simple. You use the 5 volt connector on the UNO and the ground and go to the ground and 5 volt um, or the uh, input on the uh, transmitter. And for the data connection, um, you use the 11 pin, which is the 11 analog pin on the Arduino UNO. Um, you can change that in the software if you want, that's just by default because we're using a very simple um, library to actually transmit this. Um, that's the Radiohead library and I'll show you that in a second. Okay, apologise for the screen, I don't have screen capture software on this that works well with the mic so it's either bad audio or slightly fuzzy screen and I don't know, me personally I prefer fuzzy screen over bad audio, so here we are. Um, so I am using the uh, online Arduino editor, not the, the downloaded one. Um, so the only thing that you need to do before you make this is that you need to get the Radiohead library. And to get that, if you Google uh, 
433 Arduino uh, library, you'll find this uh, page. Uh, let me just go back. Uh, that's it there. It is under randomertutorials.com. Any of the others link you to it. There are loads of them that, that actually get you to um, the library. But if you scroll down, where are we? There he is there. Um, installing the Radiohead library. If you click on that one, it'll then download a zip file for you. Um, I've already done this, so let's not download it again. And then whenever you go into the Arduino online editor, um, you can uh, upload, or well, import. And if you click on that, you import the um, uh, the zip file, and then that's it. That's that's the library imported. So that's enough of that. Here is the important bit. So um, at the top here, include RF transmitter dot h. Um, also, this code here. If you go onto this um, website here, uh, this guy also has all the code. So yeah, no point in reinventing the wheel copy and paste but for anyone who's interested um, you include the library so the RF transmitter library uh, you have the node pin so that's the uh, light I believe the output pin that's where you dictate which pin is sending the data so for us we have it set at the default for 11 but if you're doing this more complicated and you have other pins that you need to use you can you can change that here uh, void setup standard void loop this is um, starting the loop that constantly transmits and what message it's sending so hello world that's fine fine with that and um, but here is the key part here the delay so that is I believe in milliseconds I need to double check that that's a uh, 25 now the way a jammer works if you don't already know is it will overpower any other signal so all it needs to do is just constantly be blasting out um, some sort of message or something. And it doesn't need to be a message, just it needs to be blasting out RF that then um, essentially overpowers any other signal. So what we want to do is we want to change that delay to zero. And that is it. That is all you need to, to put in to make a jamming device. So what I'm going to do, I've got my uh, lead here. I'm going to plug in my Arduino. That's it. Uh, and it's picked it up. And I'm going to upload that sketch. And you'll see it working away at the bottom there. Um, if you're on Linux, there's an issue with this, um, if you're on Linux like me, where you need to change permissions um, to actually get it to pick up the Arduino. Uh, it, it's on their help page, it's dead simple to do, but it's just something that can trip you up. So that's it, done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug this for a second. So that's it, the Arduino is not powered, and I'm going to go to this, which is my SDR. And this is the 433 megahertz range. Now, what I'm going to do is just show you. you see that little bump that's happening there? That is me pressing my car keys. That is the signal that we want to block for this, this purposes. Now, if I plug in the Arduino, I see there on the left a signal pop up. See it? So I'll unplug it. it. Goes dead, so it's just here. See it? That is our jamming device. Now, I know what you're thinking. As far as gain goes, that is absolutely minuscule, and you're right. And the reason behind that is because the output of this um, transmitter is very, very small. But, as I said before, that chip can take 12 volts. So, what will happen if you give it 12 volts directly to the chip? Okay, so, 
what we're going to do is we're going to give the chip its own power supply and first and foremost I need something to hold on my clips with which I have here too cold in here, my hands aren't working. So, what I have is positive and negative. So, I'm going to take out the red one in the middle, which is the positive. Get rid of that. I'm going to bring back the negative a bit to give me a bit of room. As I said, you have to be careful not to be like short anything. There we go. And if I plug it in. There we go. Now, apologize for camera. I'm going to just move these here. Over you will now see, look at that, beautiful. So that is roughly, oh, let me see, that's roughly about doubled in size. So relative to what it was, it's about three dB gain, which is double. Um, now that is a bit more substantial and can in fact interrupt part of the signal. So you'll see a lot of it going across there, but none of it is actually higher than that peak. Now it's only in that area, or in that um, part of the frequency because of the antenna that's used. That's just where it's going to sit. Um, but it's enough to interrupt the signal. So um, with this kind of jammer, it's a partial signal jammer. In that, whenever I press my car keys, you'll see there's a big bump here and a few bumps over here. What's happening is some of the signal's getting um, interrupted, which means it's not getting a full packet. Doesn't get the full packet, can't unlock the car. And that is essentially how a jammer works. Now you can get larger um, broad spectrum jammers that just blast an entire area. And um, I'm gonna build one of them in the future. I have a uh, one for Wi-Fi, which uh, just arrived. Let me go get that. So I just moved you back over just so you can see this a bit better. Uh, this is it here. This is ooh, focus, focus. Mm. This is a 2.4 gigahertz transceiver, so it means it can send and receive. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to make a um, um, couple of different devices. I, I've got three of these. And I'm going to make one that can do man in the middle attack, so intercept traffic and send it on. F I'm, I'm going to try Bluetooth, but I don't think this will actually get the right frequency for it. Um, and also a Wi-Fi jamming device and uh, see how that goes. Um, these actually did come with some quite nice uh, 2.4 gigahertz antennas um, which are quite uh, quite well made. These were, three of these were only about 10, uh, 10 beer tokens so dirt cheap and I also have an amplifier coming because that is another way that you can boost your um, signal. So this I supplied with 12 volts to give it that extra oomph. Um, that'll only go so far, I can't just keep putting voltage through it to increase its um, output, it just doesn't work like that. So I have um, a couple of amplifiers coming, I'm going to try it with this and I'm also going to use it with um, this device here. And it can then amplify it and get much more gain, so make it a lot more um, um, powerful, a lot more wattage output, which then means more effective, more range and uh, we're gonna see how that, how that goes. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this out and I'm gonna show you it actually working. So yeah, that's it. That's how you make a uh, a jamming device. It's, it's very simple. All it is is a device that 
blasts um, or overpowers other things. Dead simple, very interesting, I think. And uh, if you've liked, please subscribe, like, and all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, hopefully see you later.